Hi, this is Nikki Bell. Simon and I are running a series of workshops on all things fundraising. We'll be in Dublin, Edinburgh, London and more helping you raise more money from companies and individuals. We'll also help you overcome the introvert inside of you and find the confidence to get out there and connect with more people. The workshops are pay what you like, so you only have to pay if you feel like you've gained something from it, which we are positive you will. For more details, find me on Twitter at Charity Nikki or at Toast Fundraiser. You're listening to Simon Scriver's Amazingly Ultimate Fundraising Superstar Podcast, talking all things fundraising, charities, nonprofits, and more. Here's your host, as always, Simon Scriver. Well, 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 welcome back to another quick tip in fundraising where we take about 10 minutes just to help you with one of your areas of fundraising and make it work a lot better for you. Uh, This week, we are going to be focusing on finding corporate partners. Specifically, we're going to look at identifying corporates and companies and organizations that are most likely to support your work and most likely to help your fundraising. And we want to completely flip this on the head from the usual approach Very often the mistake we make is we look at people and organizations that have money uh, and we try and educate them and teach them and get them to care about the work we do. Instead, we want to flip it on its head and not waste our time trying to find, you know, these 99% of people who are never going to care about the work that you do, but instead find the people who already like you. My fundraising friend and friend of the podcast, Rory Green, puts it best. She says, it is much easier to make someone who cares about you give you money than it is to make someone who has money care about you. And if we take this approach, what it's gonna do is actually allow us to not approach all the same companies, the Airbnbs, the Microsofts, the Facebook, all these same companies that all the other organizations are approaching, but actually tap into a whole bunch of companies who have staff, who have employees, who care about us, who have maybe never been approached. And one of the most encouraging things I find in corporate fundraising is the thought that there's hundreds of thousands of companies out there who have never ever been approached. They've never been approached because we've never heard of them or they just don't come to mind as an organization that has money, but they do. And so these are the ones we wanna we want to find. And we wanna take this almost Trojan horse approach of identifying the person or the people that we have a connection with and using them, working with them to get an introduction into the CEO, the marketing manager, the HR person, whoever the decision maker is to talk about supporting our organization. So the exercise that we're going to do is the same exercise I do with most of my clients when we're starting corporate fundraising. Uh, I talk about um, looking at our circles of our network and going out in further and further from this uh, ever-increasing circle that we have with us. So we're going to start by looking at your personal network. So think about your friends and your family, your old classmates, your neighbors, anyone you're connected with on LinkedIn, even places that you used to work uh, or corporate connections that you already have people who know you and trust you personally. These are gonna be people that we can we can jump ahead in the, in the uh, levels of trust. They already know us and they're gonna be much more likely to say yes and helping us get into that company. Remember, we're not imposing on them, um, but we're actually gonna be putting a proposal to them that's gonna be mutually beneficial. That's what corporate fundraising is all about. It's helping the company fulfill its marketing objectives or its HR objectives. And so this isn't just going, us going with our hand out, but actually trying to get an introduction in so we can help them as well. So look at your personal network and let's start with that because those are gonna be the quickest and easiest wins. All the while, we're gonna be continuing to increase our own network. So listen back to my quick tip about networking events. We need to have a regular uh, attendance at networking events so that we're continually increasing our own personal network of people who know us and trust us and are gonna help us get into these companies. As we move further out in our circles of the networks, we're going to do the same exercise with your staff, with your board members, with any volunteers you have at your organization. We're going to look at their friends and families and classmates and neighbors. We're going to crawl through their LinkedIn and see who maybe they're connected with. We're going to take them out for coffee and chat to other people in our organization and see who they know. We are going to work with them to get the introductions into these companies. And if if your coworkers and if your board members trust you and like you, this is gonna be much easier. So we need to spend some time with them, figure them out and try and uh, work with them to get into them. Okay, we move further out into our circles. Next, look at perhaps your suppliers. So a good exercise is to ask your accounts payable or whoever's responsible for your accounts, 
ask them to print off a list of suppliers for you that your organization has maybe paid in the last three to five years. So the people who are supplying your toilet paper, your solicitor, your landlord, anyone who um, provides the materials that helps you achieve your mission. These are companies who perhaps have a CSR program or who perhaps have spare money or staff uh, to help with your fundraising. And, and these companies already know you. They know you, they trust you, uh, and they're certainly gonna take a phone call from you or take a meeting from you because you're a customer. They've profited off you in the last few years. Uh, and so these are gonna be a great company to start with as we start to try and get these introductions and get these meetings. Now let's look at your service users. So people who, your beneficiaries for your organization. So who benefits from your organization? Now, some of your service users if they're vulnerable people, they're certainly not gonna be appropriate to talk to um, about corporate fundraising or corporate introductions. But depending on your organization, if you're maybe an animal rehoming sanctuary, um, if you help with, with legal advice, uh, if you help with certain areas of, of your work, um, your service users absolutely are gonna be appropriate to talk about this. They know you, they've benefited from you, they know the good work you do and they trust you and they're gonna to wanna to help you. So have that conversation with them. Or if they're not appropriate, think about more passive ways that you could encourage them to do it. Remember, a lot of your service users and beneficiaries are probably on your mailing list or follow you on social media, or they come into your office or in your place of work. So think about if you can put up these uh, posters, if you can put up posts on social media, mentioning that you're looking for these kind of partners. And you'll start to see that they start to come to you with suggestions and introductions of companies that might be willing to help you. Now, moving further out into our circles, think about your fans. So the people who subscribe to your mailing list, the people who are on your, uh, follow you on social media, actually look down through them and, and, and do a bit of investigation to see the ones who are most engaged with you. Try and find out perhaps where they work. Uh, you can check the domain names in their email list. You can check their bios in their Facebook and their Twitter accounts. You can try and understand where they work, what their background is, and perhaps even who they know. Yeah, uh, we're going to look at other charities and other events who have already fundraised from companies. So they're most likely going to get a mention on online or in the annual reports. So if this company has already supported this charity in the same space as you or with similar work to you, then there's a good chance that they'd be willing to talk to you uh, about sponsoring you as well. Or if their charity of the year program lapses, then they might be looking for another organization in the same space. So it's definitely worth the conversation. Also look at competing uh, businesses. So if you see a business who's supporting a charity like you, talk to that business's competitors, bring it as a case study and show them how it might also work for them as a partnership with an organization like you. Look at local businesses. Look at businesses who are on the same street, in the same building, who share the same space. The, again, there's a good reason for you to talk to them. Remember, you're trying to take the cold out of any approaches and show that there's some reason for you to be getting in touch with them uh, as it is. So if they're a local business to you, then there's definitely a reason to be inviting them to an event that you're running, uh, to be inviting them in for coffee, to popping it into them, to making them aware that you're in the neighborhood. These are reasons that people will uh, start a conversation with you. So look at the local businesses before we start going further afield. And don't just be thinking locally about your own office or your head office. Think about where your projects work. Think about where your beneficiaries work. Uh, anywhere that you can make it reasonably local, if you can talk about particular service users who are in a local area of a business, then suddenly it becomes local to that business. And remember, businesses want to support locals. So the more we can almost manufacture this locality, the more likely this business is going to support you. Finally, we might look at a relevant area of work. And this is a pretty obvious one, which we, we often do anyway. Um, but who supplies goods and services to your supporter base or your beneficiary? Think about which customers, uh, which businesses' customers cross over with your fans, with your audience. Remember, a business is trying to get access to a new, new audience, trying to get access to new customers. Um, and so if your audience is of interest to a particular business, then they're gonna wanna talk to you. They're gonna wanna talk to you about how to get their brand across, how they can get involved in your events and your projects so that they get the exposure to these people that they're trying to bring in as customers. 
When we work through all those networks and only when we've exhausted those networks would we look at cold approaches. And really, as a good fundraiser, I don't believe you should ever have to make cold, completely cold approaches to corporates because you have so many businesses within those circles that we've already talked about. You're continually growing those circles as your own network increases, as your own organization's reach increases, that actually, if we work through those circles cleverly, um, you're not going to have the time to make cold approaches. And that's when corporate fundraising becomes really, really effective when we're ignoring the cold stuff. Cold stuff can work, but the hit rate is so low that you're much better off spending your time wisely with people who already care about you and actually trying to engage with them to find out how they can help. That's the quick tip for this week. Uh, we'll be back with the next podcast with another conversation with a fundraising expert around the world. Um, and of course, our next quick tip will again be next Monday. Have a good one. You've been listening to Simon Scriver's Amazingly Ultimate Fundraising Superstar Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe and head over to changefundraising.com to learn more or get in touch with Simon. Or don't, whatever, you're big enough to